Hello YouTube, this is Frono. 24 hour challenge. We try to build as many good farms in 24 hours as we can do. And we've returned with an inventory full of slime from our slime farm. And the next step will of course be to defeat the ender dragon. So first we need to go to the nether, find a fortress and grab some blaze rods. For this I do have some nether armor with fire protection and I do have a decent bow. So let's see what we can do. So we are ready to fight the Ender Dragon. Now let's talk about the equipment that I need to defeat the Ender Dragon. We want to go through the nether, so we take our nether pants and boots with fire protection. We need obsidian and flint and steel to build another nether portal. Because I'm using seed map, so I know where the stronghold is, I will just go through the nether. And here you see why I built a slime farm before I fight the Ender Dragon. Because once the Ender Dragon is defeated, I want to build a flying machine and go straight in one direction until I find an entity. And again, seed map helps me to pick a good direction. So if I go straight west, then I know that I will find two entities pretty close to the Z level of the end island. But this is also a valid strategy if you don't know the map. You just go into a flying machine and then go until you see an entity, which can take a while. Then you end the pro out and grab your elytra. So all I need are a few scaffolding blocks to go up the obsidian pillars to the end crystals. I need a crafting bench because I, of course I need to craft an ender chest. And I need a few extra blaze rods also for the ender chest because my strategy will be to put everything that I own into my ender chest. So if some accident happens over the void, then I'm covered. And now we do an ender chest. Make sure you use a silk touch pick. So let's put everything in that we don't really need right now. Except maybe one stack of rockets or weapons. We have our shield, our food and the stuff that we need to construct a flying machine. And we'll scaffold up a bit. Oh, I forgot we should absolutely bring an ender pearl or two. Or three. And this should be high enough for our flying machine, give or take a bit. So let's build. So we need to go west, so we need to go in this direction. So let's say we do this. And of course, I need the minecart at the rail. So we put in the minecart here. Actually, I think I want to start the engine from here. So I will have the other stuff here, so I don't want to fall down. I mean, most of my stuff is my inner chest. One sticky piston pushing this way. We have an observer looking this way. We have another sticky piston going in the other direction. We have an observer this way. And now if we update this observer, our flying machine will start. So just let's do this and shouldn't be a problem. There we go. And now I need to go about 2000 blocks, which will unfortunately take 10 minutes of our precious time. But there we go. So we have an entity sighting. Let's see if we get a ship. Now, unfortunately, the other entity that I really wanted to reach was too far away. And this looks as if this might actually stop our flying machine. But in the distance, I see the outline of a ship. So that's good. Now I will just grab the elytra and leave. I'm not looting the end city. So the way to go is to just throw an enderpearl, get out of this flying machine, and then 
scaffold up to the ship. Oh, that's a beautiful sight. And the sky is the limit. I might actually check out the other answer that I looked up in the map. There we are. It's never a good, bad idea to have a backup Elytra. Man, playing with an Elytra is such a game changer. I just visited a bamboo jungle and picked up quite a lot of bamboo. And I was also in an ice biome and picked up some ice. So we now have scaffolding and water streams. But of course what we do need is a robust supply of bamboo and sugarcane because we need to craft rockets, we need to craft scaffolding. So what we do will be a small farm for melons, pumpkins, bamboo and sugarcane. And I will use an old mango design which is criminally underrated in my opinion. Let's build this here right behind the trading hall. So I'll set up a water collection and then we'll talk about the design. I'll set up a few double chests as output and use item filters with a water stream coming in. Four chests for each bamboo, sugarcane, melons and pumpkins. And I'll use the AB tileable version of the item filters. They are a bit more expensive, but they can pick up almost a full stack at a time, which will be useful for this farm. So you can put in only one filter item and a few blockers. So you can pick up 63 items at a time. And the extra cost is very moderate. You need a few more building blocks and one comparator for every two slices. And now I have a soul sand elevator for the items that will also align the items so that they don't get stuck in the hoppers. And the output of the farm will end up directly in this water stream. So we don't need any minecarts or hoppers to collect the items. And now we need a structure that has walls on the outside and is five blocks wide in the inside. In the middle we have water, next to that we have sugarcane. Then we have a gap with a water stream leading into our central collection. This is where the items will end up. And a wall on the outside. We plant sugarcane and in the middle we would need non-sticky blocks. So you could use glazed terracotta or pumpkins. Here I use leaves because that's the only thing I have. And then we set up a slime pusher that is 11 blocks long, including the block at the end. And we can extend this using a redstone block as the block at the end. So here we are, and this design is perfect if you have a slime farm and you need just a little bit of sugarcane or pumpkins or melons or bamboo. The idea is very simple. So we have a water stream here. So we use the usual method to get an infinite water stream so we can extend the water stream here with ice. And then we just use two signs like so and then the next water source is up here and this will move the items from anywhere here so nothing will get stuck. And then the items are first grouped to stacks by the slab on ice, there's packed ice under that, and then moved into a water elevator. They will get aligned to the side, they will go over the item filters. And the idea is we have here a water stream, we have crops growing. And from time to time, we will just have a little redstone signal here. And this causes our whole contraction to move. So you see these pistons move, but they also move the redstone block and they move the ne next pistons. And all we need is a redstone pulse that is long enough. And obviously you can build this very long, you can chain it. This is totally unload proof. So unlike flying machines, this will never get stuck. You don't have to worry about chunk loading or anything. You can build it longer and you can build it higher. And what we'll do is to use a second sugarcane layer and then two bamboo layers. And then we'll use the very same principle to build a melon and pumpkin slice. And apart from being unload proof, the big advantage of this design is that it's pretty cheap compared to other designs. For 20 plants, you need only two sticky pistons, one redstone block and 10 pieces of slime. You can build a lot of layers on top of that, so you only have to set up the water streams once. And of course for a really large scale farm, a flying machine is still better. But here we just need a very limited supply. I actually made a mistake. The redstone block shouldn't be between the pistons, the pistons need to be one more to the end. And of course you need to put some torches on the walls 
sugarcane and bamboo grow only if they have enough light and we do have the skylight here, but we also want the farm to work in the night. So that's bamboo and sugarcane. And for melons and pumpkins we use the same principle, but our farm will be two blocks wider. So we need three blocks in the middle and all of these blocks must be either air, water or non-sticky. And then next to that we will have our farmland where our pumpkins and melons grow. Place melon or pumpkin seeds every second block. Put in the water streams at the bottom, exactly like in the sugarcane and bamboo side. And now we set up the slime pusher. So we have solid slime in the middle and every second block where the pumpkins or melon are, we put a solid block. And this way we can move this slime pusher to the left and to the right. We will break any melons or pumpkins that have grown, but we won't damage the stems. And again, we can extend this pretty much indefinitely with a redstone block that triggers the next pistons. Make sure to test your slime pushers that everything moves, nothing is above the push limit. And then you can do the next layer. Here it's really good to have leaves. So you will have a three wide layer of leaves in the middle because you can waterlock the leaves. So you can place farmland on the outside and it will be hydrated. And so one layer of the melon pumpkin farm is just two blocks high, making it very compact. And here is a look at the clock that I built. So basically this is an EFO clock and on both sides we have a redstone torch. Redstone torch here, redstone torch here. That will go into a small pulse extender. And this pulse extender determines the duration of which the pistons are pushing. Because here we have four pistons in a row that means we need eight redstone ticks. So a pulse extender is a bit too long, but there you go. And then the signal on both sides is relayed to the two columns here. So we have one column here, one column here. And for the sugarcane and the pumpkins, we can actually really easily use a redstone tower. So because the difference between two layers is exactly four blocks. So you can just have redstone here powering the pistons and on the other side and this is powered by this torch and then you go two blocks up, have a torch, another two blocks, another torch and this will have the same state. So this works perfectly. Now for bamboo we have made this one block higher. So you may have to put in an extra block like so or just a bit more redstone dust. But in principle you can extend this tower easily. Here is actually easy to use a glass tower. If you put a repeater here, then you could make this eight layers high, 16 blocks. So 15 blocks for the redstone dust and one block here down below. And I will fill the ether clock with about three stacks of items so that it triggers once every two and a half minutes. This higher frequency was just to show you how it works. And also I had my buddy Steve AFK here for quite a while. And let's see what we've got. Plenty of sugar cane. We don't need to worry about rockets anymore. Also, of course, plenty of bamboo we get a ton of bamboo, so we can also craft sticks and maybe use it even for smelting. We have a decent amount of pumpkins and a decent amount of melons. Of course, here we should put in a crafter. And since we now know that the farm is working, we can just burn the rest. So if the chests are full, we'll just burn the stuff. Of course, we could also uh, craft the bamboo to bamboo blocks. And here on the inside, I fixed the position of the pistons. So now they are all correct. I also added some item filter here for our mob farm. So we have two slices for gunpowder, we have two slices for bones. So I haven't sorted out all of the chests yet, but here we will only get more gunpowder and these are actually full. Here we get bones, string and I set up a chest for redstone. I wasn't aware that we get so many witches in this mob farm, so we really don't have to set up a witch farm to get more redstone, which is also really nice. But I think that's it for this episode. Let's check our laundry list. We are almost 20 hours in, so we get slightly over four hours left. Let's see what we can do in this time. 
We have cobble, we have iron, we have a trading hall, we have a villager breeder, we've got an elytra, we've got melons and pumpkins, we get a universal mob farm, that's not too shabby. We got the slime farm and the swamp over there. So I think the next project should be a tree farm, because I really don't like to chop these trees all the time to get wood for hoppers and chests. But we'll do this in the next episode. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe so that you don't miss the rest of the series and see you next time, bye bye!